welcome to ai catalyst so today we are going to discuss about pp score pp score is in just like in correlation matrices like uh, i mean pearson or spearman or kendall so how it is different discuss about the existing correlations so how do they work and we will look into the pp score and the interpretations how do you interpret the values of pp score and we will do i mean comparative study correlation matrices and the pp score and we look for the underwood implementation of the pp score how it is implemented what are the libraries available so how they have done it how they make it available so what the under, underlying logic and we will discuss the pros and cons of the pp score and at last we will work on a small data set to get a pp score of our data set we will experiment on that so we have the pearson kandal and spearman correlation coefficients for the linear data where these only work for the numerical data so as you can see in that figure so we can get a strong or positive correlation or a weak positive correlation or sometimes a weak negative correlation or moderate negative correlations so the value differ i mean varies from minus 1 to 1 so if it is more towards minus 1 it's a negative correlated if it is towards 1 it is a positively correlated if it is between 0 it is moderately or there is no correlation at all so that's how we interpret it so we have three points so where they holds good or not so first we will take in linear data linear relationship so pearson kandal and spearman all three holds good for the linear relationships and what for the non-linear relationships how we get the score for any non-linear data so as you can see in the figures here so we get a correlation value as in zero for every data if, the, if there's a non-linear data exists then there is no correlation lack in symmetry and non-symmetric symmetric they don't i mean treat on symmetric or non-symmetric while while doing any i mean the calculations pp score which overcomes all these so it works for linear data it works for non-linear data and as well as for the symmetry and non-symmetry it considers it and it gets an value out of it pp score is developed by the agit labs and it released under the bamboo blade I mean, project so uh, they have open sourced it in april 2020 it's it's recently i mean released so what is pp score pp score is a measure of a correlation between two features the value varies the ranges between 0 to 1 and works for both the categorical as well as the non categorical data here are some numerical features so the Pearson, Spearman, the candle, they work only for the numerical data. For the categorical data, we have the chi-square test, ANOVA test. There are different other tests so that we find the correlations. But PP score is then one solution for all the data. Though it is a categorical data, it's a numerical data. So it's a one-stop one solution. How do we interpret the value of PP score? So it considers symmetric and asymmetric data. So we, we say it like finding the value of y based on x or finding the value of x based on y is not always the same so that's how it says as you can see here in the figure so there's a feature and there's a target so if you take the the x values are ranging from minus 2 to 2 and the y values are ranging from 0 to 4 so there is a clear cut function so we have y is equal to x square and plus some error so when we put any values to the x we will get the value of y but not the same case in the reverse way. If you put any value for the y, you won't get an x value. Because for a same value of y, we have two different x's. The PP score considers this also while calculating the value. So here the value for the, the correlation of this non-linear data is say zero. Either Pearson or Spearman or the can also, they say it's a zero. But the PPS will say x to y, x predicting y, is 0.88 and y predicting x is good is zero so that's how we interpret the always the pp score ranges from zero to one if the value is zero means x cannot predict the column y if the value is equal to one it means x perfectly predicts the y if the value ranges between zero to one then it is the ratio compared to the baseline model so the baseline model uh, in any regression or the classification model we have baseline models compared to those baseline model how much it is varying how much ratio it is varying to predict the target variable moving to the some comparative understanding of the correlation versus the pps so we have dynamic data here 
so correlation matrix uh, for the titanic data and the pp matrix for the titanic data as we discussed the existing correlation measures they only consider the numerical data that's why the categorical uh, columns have been dropped here so we have ticketing price age class and surveys these are all the numerical data so we have a matrix here in the same way we have matrix uh, of the same data considering the the categorical data as well so surveyed class sex age ticket id ticket price the sex age and uh, ticket id are the categorical data so though the pps is able to find the measure for it we will interpret some of the values here so considering the age age versus survived in the correlation matrix so we have negative 0.077 the same it's it is considering everything as on symmetric so the value here is 0 0.77 0 0.077 and 0 0.077 though either from age age to survived or survived to age so both are the same it's then symmetric but in PPS matrix it's not the same the let's take an example so finding the class based on the ticket price so if we class predicting ticket price is 0.9 here but the ticket price finding the class is 0.2 so they are not the same so so we could able to get the ticket price based on the class that's how it is giving 0.9 value i mean it is more i mean it is able to find the ticket price very i mean accurately i mean almost 90 percent accurately wherein the vice versa is not happening the ticket price couldn't able to find the class maybe that might be the nature of this data set so that's how the pps is giving us the more insights or the more uh, um, the uh, interpretations of the any data how they are correlated we will discuss about the how it is implemented internally so the PP score is calculated using only one feature as a feature column and one column as a target column. So here you can see the X predicting Y. X predicting Y is not same as Y predicting S. If you want to find the correlation between two variables, then the PP score will give you two values from X predicting Y and Y predicting X. So what algo it is using? It is using decision tree. They have picked the decision tree as underlying because it is simple, it, it works good for the non-linear data as well as it's not very complex. If the target column is numeric, they consider the decision tree regressor. If the target column is categorical, then they consider decision tree classifier. In the same way, what the encoding mechanism they are using. If the target feature is categoric, then they are considering label encoder if the feature is categoric then they are using one hot encoder here is the main idea they are finding the pps score for the regression here is the formula pps equal to one minus main absolute error of the model divided by mean absolute error of the base model wherein for the classification the we the calculating the f1 model the they calculate the precision and recall and uh, there's a, and also we calculate the f1 score so the f1 score of the model minus f1 score of the naive model that's what the baseline model divided by the one minus f1 score of the baseline model so this is how it is getting calculated for the regression the baseline um, is like a mean absolute error of any naive model it always predicts the median of the target column wherein for the classification it always predicts the most common class of the target column so moving on we'll look for some pros and cons the pp score works well with categorical as well as the numerical data unlike other correlation matters and it it used to find the patterns in the data it used is good for feature selection it used to detect the information leakage for the data normalization as well the cons of both pp score it is slower than correlation so if you have 40 features so it will it has to calculate 14 to 50 around 1600 calculation it has to make so that's how it is done slower but it is very efficient than the correlation matrices the interpretation of the pp score is not as easy as correlations there is a slight uh, learning curve i mean related to any domain if you are working on any regression problems or any problems so the domain understanding 
of what variables you are choosing either x or y how it is interpreting so that interpretation is not easy and it also it carries the limitations of the underlying technique so what algorithm as here they are using that decision tree that might be having some limitations so even that exhibits here in the pp score moving on we'll we'll have a demo so to install the pp score we just have to type the pip install pp score that's it okay we'll look into that demo now so here we got a data of 50 startups so we have all some data of 50 different startups so how do they spend in their marketing in their r d in their administration and where do they stay like in which state and their profit so we'll apply the pp score on this data and we'll see how it works i have already installed the pp score you have to import the pandas and you have to import the pp score so here i'm reading the data into the data frame so let me view the head of the data i have the r d spend administration marketing spent state and profit so i have the data here let me calculate the pp score for the marketing spent and the profit these are both are numerical data so let me apply it it returns a dictionary so where we get all the data related to uh, the pp score of which baseline model it is using what algorithm it is using and uh, what is the x variable what is the y variable and what is the exact score here the baseline score is some xyz and the metric is mean absolute error as it is an it is considering as a regression problem so it is considering m a e as an metric so the model it is using is decision tree regressor with all these parameters and the model score is this much and the pp score this is what our main focus it is saying 0.39 is the score the marketing spent predicting profit that's how we interpret it's not and vice versa profit interpreting market spent is will be a different measure the x is marketing spent and y is the profit so now we'll do it for the entire data set for all all the five columns all five by five so we'll be getting a matrices so it has already calculated let me view it by the command pps.matrixdf so we are passing entire data frame and it is giving the data frame in return so that data frame is here the scores between r d versus r d that's that would be one obviously r d versus administration r d versus marketing spent the same way for all the data we'll look and heat map for this for this i need to import the seaborn and uh, let me view it here's the heat map so how they are interrelated all these five uh, features how they are related to other we have a data here so as you can see the profit versus the r d spend is very high wherein the profit versus r d spent is again i mean there's a slight difference here r d predicting profit is 0.79 whereas the profit identifying the r d is 0.69 instead of the other correlation matrices we can use on pp score for wide range of feature engineering or any other data exploration techniques it would be an added advantage to know and to explore this feature i'll provide an um, github link where they have um, given all the details how it's been implemented and how we can use it and even how we can change that underlying logic you can use an any other algorithm to make the pp score work better make work faster enjoy pp score thank you